So hello and welcome to the video. Um, I'm just just left my van at the local garage um, because I decided that uh, the battery uh, situation was a bit too much for me uh, to try to access it, um, and uh, decided to, uh, to take it uh, to where I am now, which is just a few streets away from where I live in our village. Um, the the chap at the garage is quite happy to to fit both the the box and the battery and also I asked for uh, an oil change so that's been done too so I'm just going to take advantage of this uh, trip back home because it's near lunch time and uh, I'm not going to hang about too much but uh, just to, to, to see how things are really uh, how it starts and uh, you know how uh, everything behaves uh, and I'll probably talk a bit later about uh, things in detail so off we go switch the, the dash cam on there we go now memory keys um ah, good question there they are can't really get very far without my keys so we'll see if it starts first time first time sorry so wait for the glow plugs to glow and heat the engine up and then we'll get going uh, looks like the fuel's a bit low. Brilliant. That was a bit scary. Uh, I think there's a problem with a little computer. Uh, you have to excuse me, I've got no external mic, okay? Uh, so hopefully you can hear what I'm saying, so I'll try and shout a little bit. Uh, it's very strange because uh, when I turned it on the first time, turned the ignition on, um, you had uh, the, um, the warning light for the fuel, uh, just one bar for the fuel. Now I've got no warning light and two bars get started, so it looks like I need to get some fuel at some point very very approximative uh, when it comes to the um, reading of the fuel when it gets stuck it towards empty so we'll get going we'll roll backwards right quick way home I'm getting hungry and I've also got a new external mic uh, that is currently in my father-in-law's letterbox so I'm going to have to go and pick that up so hopefully I'll be able to do some other videos without having to shout so far so good starts on first time sounds nice and um, yeah, impressed So I'll talk about the rest in another part of the video. Time for me to go and eat, so see you a bit later. So it's the following day and uh, going to see uh, what's been going on with the van while it's at the garage. So as you can see the mechanic at our local garage has managed to to fit the the battery box in and the new battery and uh, he's managed to as well use what looks like um, foam to, to cushion the battery so it doesn't rattle about too much. Unfortunately uh, he wasn't able to put the, the lid on which is down there uh, because he told me that uh, well first of all as you can see if we put the camera like that it's not quite in line with the the hole um, and there's a, a tank here down there which is um, making it so well, you can't put the, the battery box any further back so that's stuck uh, so we can't put the, the cover on top uh, plus the fact that uh, even if you could put the cover on top it would be too high and actually come up to about here so we won't be able to close the seat so I think I'll have to make do with uh, just having the, the battery covered from the bottom which is really what was the most important because um, all of the 
the road muck and stuff is thrown up up into the battery uh, which is not ideal so I'd like to say uh, thank you to Cronkle Roots uh, you'll be able to find on YouTube who's a Dutch bloke who's um, got a channel devoted to uh, adv advising of ideal routes for the Sun Permi in the Netherlands so that's quite an interesting uh, site um, so if you find him on YouTube have a look um, he's advised me that um, as you've seen below the battery there's, uh, there's nothing underneath you know you can see the road uh, through the bottom of the van and he suggested that perhaps it would be a good idea to put in a, a plastic panel of some sort underneath the, the chassis so let's take a look at that, I mean in theory um, he's right, uh, we should have some sort of protection so the idea would be to put a panel below the battery box and below the battery box which we can't see anymore very well is the chassis uh, previously when we had just the battery on the chassis we could see everything but now we can't because the box is in the way but uh, just underneath there um, there could be a possibility of putting a plastic sheet over part of the bottom of the cab um, if we look this way you've you've not got much because that's the actual step that I'm sitting well the the seat is on I'm sitting on the other side, on the other seat. It would mean having to get underneath the van somehow, which would be a pain, especially with the protection bars that are sort of in the way uh, from crawling underneath. Uh, makes the, the gap a bit narrow, so we'll have to jack it up or something to, to fit that. Talking about uh, looking underneath, um, there's a little bit of film footage that you can, you can see next, which will show you roughly uh, what the mechanic has done um, to fit the, the battery in the box. Well as you can see there's a Jubilee clip holding the actual box to the chassis and the strap that came with the battery is used to basically go through the box through a couple of slots to hold the battery into the box. So it's not been, it's not very easy to film underneath the, uh, the van so I've basically um, filmed underneath here at the bottom here blindly uh, I'll just put my phone underneath and hopefully manage to capture something so you can see that it's actually used Jubilee clips to to fix the the box onto the chassis uh, and also the strap that was supplied with the box so I, I'm assuming that's uh, quite substantial to to hold it in so when I first started the van yesterday, after I picked the, the van up from the garage, um, it didn't start first time, I think it was probably second or third time it started. But um, if you listen, when, when I try to, to turn the engine over, or rather turn the starter motor over, uh, you'll hear that the, um, the battery is pretty good. Uh, I hope so, it's brand new, but compared to the old battery, um, oops, just not my camera. Uh, compared to the old battery, uh, it sounds like there's a lot more power there. But unfortunately it's not starting first time. So that's something that's worrying me a little bit. to stop the engine so I can speak um, and I don't really want to tie that running too long because I'm getting a lot of fumes coming up through the hole so I think what we'll do is we'll stick that on there and close the seat down so yeah it's starting sort of a uh, second time um, I mean if I start it now it's going to start straight away let's wait for the glow box to go out And for some reason it's saying I'm running out of fuel, so that's not ideal either. Hmm. So there it's going to it's going to start straight away because obviously um, I've only I've only just started it up. So with it starting up a second time running, I, I think that's uh, that's not too bad. But I, I think that eventually also that I need to change the glow plugs which um, is something I've been planning to do a little while now. Um, I found a, a tutorial online with a, 
the French Sans Permis uh, YouTube channel uh, shows you how to do that. So um, it's about time I did it really because I bought the glow plugs uh, probably about a year ago. But um, I think changing the battery was a good thing to do. And now it's a case of tracing, tracing back and uh, we'll see how it is once I've, I've changed the, the plugs. So if you remember I I showed you this in the last video. Uh, it's this sort of cup holder shaped uh, cigarette lighter multi socket with individual buttons on each. Um, so I showed you me actually testing the old battery with, with this, and on the, the other end, the cigarette lighter end, plug end, you've got some USB plugs. So You've already seen it in the other video. If you watched it, but you haven't, now you know what it is. So I'm going to use this to to basically test um, the new battery. So I'm going to stick it in there for now. Um, the idea is to make something permanent so that it doesn't move about too much. So we'll stick that in in the socket. Whoops, upside down. Can't really see whether it's upside down or not, really. Um, so it's reading 12.4, and I've not charged the battery at all. I bought it. Um, I drove back from the garage uh, with the with it. It has sat in the back of my van for a couple of weeks, but uh, I've not actually charged it up since I bought it. So perhaps that might be something to do at some point. But it's a 12.4, which. Um, well, I don't know if that's reasonable or not. So the idea now is to do the same test as I did yesterday, um, just to see how it fares with, um, you know, coping with the, uh, you know, with the uh, power needed to start the engine and so on. So I think what I'll do first of all is to put the ignition on. 11.1. Ah, it's at 12 again. So we'll we'll start up. You have to excuse me, I've got no external mic for the minute. So 13.4, I think it's uh, higher than I had yesterday with the old battery, so that's good. So I'm going to turn everything on, but I did yesterday, yesterday or well, not yesterday, in the last uh, video. So hazard warning lights, the heater, ventilator, whatever you want to call it, um, headlights. Headlights and in the wiper. What have we got? So it's close to 12 and it was. Oh, it's going down. It's going up. You know what? No, it's going to go right down. So that's on the part with the old battery. Let's turn everything off again. Now, the only thing I've left on is the headlights. And you can see it's above 12. So if I turn that off, it was 13.4. So what happens when I turn the ignition off and I put the headlights on? Let's see. Yeah, it drains it quite a bit, but it still stays within a sensible level. 10.7, 6. Well, I don't know how far it's going to go back down, but uh, we can assume that uh, uh, the health the health of the battery is a lot better than the the old one now. Turn the, the lights off. So as a conclusion to this rather short video, uh, I think that um, I think it's slightly better off uh, in some respects. Uh, I think I just need to to be careful with the, the headlights because uh, that seems to still drain the new battery quite a bit, not as much as the old battery, and probably it would hold up more or less. But I don't really want to get into the habit of leaving the lights on. Uh, normally on this van there's a, a beeper sound that sounds when you if you leave the lights on and then open the driver's door it sounds but uh, again uh, another thing I need to sort out is the uh, the fuses so 
I'm assuming the fuses are blown for the, the buzzer. Uh, and the fuse box, which I found fairly recently, is just stuck underneath the bottom of the dashboard. It's not even a, a little box. And there's no diagram to tell you what fuse is what. So that's another thing I'm going to have to sort out on the long list of things to do on this uh, on this van. So I think in short, um, yeah, the getting the battery protected is good. Um, it's a better battery. It's more responsive. You can hear that there's more juice there when you when you start up. Uh, you can hear that it is a new battery. So I'm not wasting my money and getting a new one. Um, and generally, um, if you look back to earlier in the video when I was uh, driving back home again um, it's very smooth you know it's very smooth running the the oil has been changed and uh, I think that's uh, something that is a good thing and uh, has improved things slightly so I think we'll we'll leave it there and um, lots of future things to do uh, and lots of future things to cover which is uh, great for the channel and uh, so I'd like to thank you for your continued support and uh, see you in another video. Take care of yourselves. Bye.